Okay, I wanted to make a little video here and show you what I've done with the wings now that I've kind of gotten gotten them all straightened out where they had a, a warp and a slight bow in them. Some people were asking about this. Um, the carbon fiber spar is actually embedded in the middle of the wing at the high point. I didn't have to make a cut on the top and put it in this way or uh, or excuse me on the bottom and make a cut on the top and put it in this way. I actually went in from the wing root this way with this carbon fiber tube. You'll see that I'm actually using a tube this time instead of uh, get the shadow out of it here instead of rods like I did before when I was originally setting up these wings before I painted them I took this rod and uh, took the end of it right here actually the other end of it here and I sharpened that with an exacto knife and a little bit of sandpaper made the other end of it kind of razor sharp and then I went in through the core here real slow at an angle I'll zoom back on the wing here this carbon rod goes down the length of the middle of the wing and actually comes out to right about let's see here zoom out here starts here it actually ends right about here somewhere where it, where it starts to get thin you can actually I think on the bottom here right about in here I started to feel it just about start to break through so it's just about toward the end of the light right here so it's got a full carbon rod in it but I went down it this way and zoom back out here so I'm getting ready to attach these wings and just little by little real slow turn turned it like this and put it in, I actually put it in my little electric drill and put it on real slow speed and just worked it down in there and then pulled it back out and then I used Gorilla Glue to put it in there it sticks real well to this uh, I actually talked with uh, John JSF, JSFRD on RC groups about this several times and we we just uh, shared lots of information he's been a big help to me but put that in there so this is actually secured in with uh, Gorilla Glue so that if there was any little gouges inside the foam where this gouged it out when that expanded it it filled it all in so it's all solid and it is solid as a rock and that's the carbon fiber tube I have this much of it sticking out the original rod came out to probably right about here to cut an angle because I'll turn it upside down and actually put it into the airplane and show you kinda how it how it fits in there uh, pre-done uh, which will give me my spar for my wing now I'll put the camera down here for a minute and flip this plane over oh one more thing you'll notice on the what I'm also done here is I've taken the foam that's gonna mount to the airplane and I peppered it full of little holes using a screwdriver a little jeweler screwdriver done the same thing on the airplane where it's gonna mount with because I'm gonna I'm gonna attach the wings with Gorilla Glue uh, real light so that as the glue expands it'll also fill in and push itself into these holes in the wing and act like grass roots in the ground and it'll just have all these solid joints right here plus the spar joint itself move my connectors there for the flaps ailerons and uh, external light light there and the wing oh, if I can stay focused here will actually get my camera here in spot I've already put my hole there we'll just slip right in there like that and make make the mate to the air, to the fuselage and then secure it down and I'm going to turn this plane over for a second so be patient with me turn it around so we're looking at the other side Okay, 
Now I've got the plane upside down, trying to steady my camera with my hand here. Get the wing up. Now then, down here in the wheel well, you can't see it, but there's actually a hole right there. The spar will actually come all the way through the wheel well and actually extend into this piece of foam, which is the side of the intake, just before it starts to go through and break into the intake. So, the spar, the spar will go in here, into the wing root, go all the way through. It'll actually be epoxied to the, in our gorilla glue, should I say, to the floor. And it actually clears the wheel well area right here. The wheel goes right over it. I've already tested it. And be secured just about an eighth of an inch into this piece of foam is about how thick it is. As you can see here, see if I can zoom out, line it all up here. Put it in my, in, in the hole I made for it right there. You'll also notice the CG marks I made there. The forward one is the stock location at 790, and the back mark is the new one we've been using at 820. Um, and we're actually flying a little further behind that at 830, 10 more millimeters, is what we have found to be the best CG from Glenn and uh, John. Basically, Glenn did all the testing on that, so. Way to go, Glenn. Just slides right in there. It'll line right up. And then it just pushes right in. Mates right up, and then I'll make all these connections. And then once they're done, from inside the hatch, they're left out. I've left them all out long right now. My servo leads, and then I'll drag them through the hole put a piece of tape over that hole and seal it up and it'll be nice and smooth and these won't be hanging out and then the wing sitting there and right there is just a static rough fit and it's hanging now then as you can see the carbon fiber rod traverses across the wheel well bay it's actually right across it's just touching the, the top part of the foam that the stock retracts would have mounted to right there and then extends into the foam. Now I made all these measurements on this before I glued the top and bottom halves of the fuselage together so that I could actually see it and knew where to cut it off right there when I got it in the wing um, and chopped it and could chop it off so that I knew that once I got the fit it's going to fall right in the right place. A little hard to do with a ARF or a ready to fly that's already assembled this is uh, easier to do with a kit where the top and the bottom pieces aren't glued together yet and you can just work with one side, see where it's at, make a mark and cut it. Because you'll note, I've cut it at an angle right there to match with the lines. So, the connectors keep getting in the way here. So that as it lines up, and they're giving me a real fit here. So that as it lines up, it goes right into the foam and ends without going into the into the nacelle part of it. And that's where I'm going to get part of my strength is relying on this surface right here to help bear some of the load off the that's traversed down through this. Even though this doesn't really need it, but help it. The last one uh, we d I did I actually made a slot like a lot of us have done in the wing put a carbon rod in it and then uh, spackle it back up and sanded it but you could you could always see it it didn't cover up well this way there's no no external cuts on the airplane on the outside you can't see it but yet it's buried in there and actually think it's a little stronger darn sure looks a lot better and then I'll Gorilla Glue that in and then any kind of slop that's in the hole even though I use the rod itself to make the hole, like I said, to sharpen one end of it, go right into the foam, it cuts it really nice and clean. Well, that Gorilla Glue will expand and fill in around it and make it real solid. I did the same thing with the retracts right here. 
doesn't look all real pretty, but they're inside here. Nobody looks at these anyway. But you'll notice the wood blocks underneath these RC Lander retracts right here. I took them out last night. Since they're only epoxied on the bottom surface right there to the foam, but there's nothing holding them. There's really no uh, strength in them when, I, when they were glued in here. So I went in in all the gaps and I put Gorilla Glue in here and then let it expand. So now they're, they're glued in with epoxy on the mating surface that glued to the bottom of the foam. Right there. And then on the sidewalls, they're all, it's all Gorilla Glued there and in behind it. Let it expand and dry it overnight. I just painted it up. And now, that's kind of like a box that's real solid that should take the impact forces and distribute the stresses of the wheels hitting the ground, you know, minus the strut, and not rip those blocks out of the out of the airplane since we don't have the full surface like the stock retracts do. When they're mounted down, they're actually sitting on the a whole flat surface like so and distributing the load on that foam that's pre-molded down there for them to fit. So now it just sits on top of that, and I'm using the little cavity that's in there. It's actually the perfect size for a servo connector wire, and that's the connector for the wire. So if I need to take them out and service them, just unplug it right there. Out comes the retract. Plug in a new one if I have to, without having to go back in. Of course, it goes. This, that was laid in there before I glued the two halves together so that I could have maintenance access. The other side's inside the patch I did that connects to the receiver but also did the same thing with the Gorilla Glue for the retracts like I said just put it in there a little bit of water dampened it up with some sponge and some q-tips poured that in there let it all expand because it's expanding foam and it's light it really doesn't add a whole lot of weight at all a lot lighter than the epoxy and just as strong plus it'll flex so it'll allow some flexibility and give in there uh, before it breaks, whereas epoxy would get brittle and snap, even though epoxy is real strong, real strong, it's just a, trying to keep a weight. I think this is a better to lightweight option, but same thing, and I'm going to do the wings the same way. The verticals on this plane that I glued on are also glued on with uh, grill glue. As a matter of fact, the whole airplane is glued together with Gorilla Glue. The only thing that I've used epoxy on are these right here are glued with epoxy after I roughed them up and sanded them up on the inside and the magnets it's the only pieces on the entire airplane anywhere that are glued together with epoxy all the rest of it is glued together with Gorilla Glue uh, keep in mind when you're gluing the top and bottom halves together and you want to use it very stingy just a thin film is all you need uh, on either side and then kind of dampen one side it'll start to expand so uh, and glue the two pieces together in a nice little firm fit uh, helps it and then after it dries just take a razor and shave it off and paint it. You can't see it. I'll turn it over here in a minute and show you the tails. You can't even see we're expanded and they're nice and solid. Uh, practice around with some some scrap pieces and uh, get the use to how much it, how far it expands before it, st it stops. Before you do your airplane is uh, also some good advice. But that's what I did with the wing. And I peppered it there and same thing. So after I fill that cavity right there with Gorilla Glue, a real light film, kind of like contact cement, and take this part of the wing and do the same thing. And I take a wet rag and just kind of dampen it up, put the two together. It'll set up in about 30 minutes, just like epoxy does, an hour, and be hardened. And then it'll dry completely overnight. But that's what I've done with the wings. And the most significant thing I did with the difference is, you'll note, like I said, the spar is down through the foam, and I went in through the wing root, and just real carefully went all the way down to the tip without breaking through either side. The key thing there is take it slow and easy, little bits at a time, go in and out, in and out. Uh, it'll also help if you've got a table when you're doing this. I learned by this wing warp, which I may have accidentally induced, when you're doing it, lay the wing on its flat side since the wing is a flat bottomed airfoil before you get all the servos and stuff on it and it'll, it'll lay flat and work on it flat 
so you can keep the wing straight and true when you're putting this in so that when you get it in there it doesn't accidentally want to cause an arc or a ripple. I actually was working right here where I'm taking this video in my lap when I did it and I was working upside down so I may have been holding down on it like this and that's what causes bow when I put it in there and expanded but it was able to get it out just by letting it sit overnight by blocking it up put taking a heat gun going over the heat gun setting it down blocking the tip and putting it back up and now the wing is all perfectly straight and true as a matter of fact I even put a little washout right in the wing tip right here Let's see if I can block this up on my knee a little bit so it's got just a little bit of positive washout right there at the tip whereas before it was negative let it set for a couple days and nice and straight next time I do the, my other my other one I'll actually keep it down straight like this with some sandbag weights on it and then go in straight so that I know that the rod here you just have to take you like I said take your time and go go straight kind of eyeballing it right down the wing like that and I went down the right down the center of the wing you'll notice I kind of use that panel line that's on the top of the wing for a reference and my rod actually shoots right down the center of that rod until it comes to the tip it just barely misses the breaking out of the tip right tip of the wing right there by about an inch if I'm not mistaken it actually ends right about that line right here and really don't even need to go that far originally uh, probably for the spar on the wing if you come in into about halfway into where the aileron is that's probably more than plenty right there and that's the rod again I used carbon fiber 176 millimeter by I think it's 156 millimeter available at most of the craft stores and hobby stores and this is the only spar in the airplane other than the spar um, bar that's in the turtle back that I use to stiffen up the uh, see if I can flip this over again one handed uh, couldn't do it the other carbon fiber spar that's in the hatch that I use that is a carbon rod or kind of like a beam and I placed it in the turtle back to stiffen it up from taking it on and off and since it's going to get abused quite a bit and it's a long piece of foam that's pretty thin. That's how I did the wings folks and how I'm planning on doing it. Punch a little bunch of holes in it right in the surface that's going to get glued on. A real thin film of glue right in here. Same thing on the wing, press the two together, put some tape across them, <clears throat> hold it together and let it expand. When it, when it starts to seep through the joint here, it's best not to touch it and just let it expand until it dries. Take a razor blade and cut it off. Here's the verticals. They are glued on with Gorilla Glue. Didn't even come through the seams at all except in a few little spots. Here are the joint where and it fills the gap just paint over it and blend it in strong the wing when I was flexing it flexed so much I almost I bent it so much I was standing on it with my foot and I still didn't get the wing to break all right, I'll get this up and get you guys a look at it. Some guys were asking about how I actually put the carbon rod in. Again, in through the wing root, then you don't have to slice the top and bottom and make a cut in the wing, which actually weakens the wing, even though you go back and spackle it. This way, all you've done is drill a hole in it. And, I, and use, use the rod to do it. Just sharpen one end of it and go right down it on the inside, all the way down. Alright, more later guys. Just about done with the airplane. Mods are all done. They just need to get the wings on.